So hello and welcome along to another edition of Isolation Interviews for Hospital Radio Reading and for my YouTube channel. And my guest today, another star from Neighbours. I love getting to chat to, to the, the cast of Neighbours. The fantastic Riley Bryant, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me, Matthew. No, it's an absolute honour. I mean, you, the last year for yourself, while you've been kind of bedding into Neighbours, must have been very manic. I mean... I've just worked it out because you you started up on the show back in April of last year. So it's a year now that you've been back, or I say been back, that you've been there. How has that time been for you? How have you found sort of getting into the world of Neighbours? Well, uh, it, it certainly, it's certainly been amazing because um, having my year at, at, at uh, Fremantle Studios in, in Nutter Warning, has, it's, it's my second home now and I love it so much and I love the people there. But um, that being said, it's it's still been um, it's been challenging uh, balancing school and work together, respectively. Um, but still, it's been a fun challenge to go through, and uh, yeah, I hope I stay there for another long time. But yeah, it's just been an absolute challenge with um, with school, mostly school. Um, but yeah, I love working. I mean, before you joined the show, were you did you watch it? Were you a fan, or have you come into it with completely new eyes? Uh, so I. I can't remember ever watching a single episode of Neighbours, which is really uh, embarrassing going into that. But I got another embarrassing story, actually, um, during my first ever audition, not first ever audition, uh, during the callback for my audition, I actually asked the producers and the casting director, what is Ramsey Street? And uh, that was a really embarrassing thinking about it now. But uh, I can answer all this fully now. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm knowledgeable about it, I hope, I think. I did a test and I've scored decently I think uh, but yeah um just a bit of embarrassing backstory there yeah so I had no idea what Neighbours well I knew what Neighbours was but I've never never watched it and I mean obviously coming in as a brand new family for the brand new sort of series of the show what's it been like being a part of I believe it's the first lesbian couple we've had on the show which is great so what's it been like being part of this new family on the show oh amazing and I think that's such a great way to be like to be introduced into a new show where you have all these other people who are also new coming into the show with you and you're like all supporting each other and great, uh, which is amazing because I, I have such great, such amazing chemistry with um, with uh, Naomi and Sarah and Marley who play my family. And um, it, it's been absolutely amazing. And we've all like learned together how to get through Neighbours as well as, as, well as um, learning through the other cast members, but it's been great going through it as opposed to just like being a new character by yourself going into names, which is, yeah, it's amazing. And getting to join that, you know, be, being featured in the first scene back must've been quite good fun and getting to drive as well. Must've been nice. Oh, absolutely. I loved those scenes so much. Um, so the very first scene um, that we were filming, I think, I think they filmed some other scenes a few months ago in England with Mike and Jane, but back in Australia, I think, the very first scene filmed back was um, one with me looking around the street, which was so, it's, I, I had no idea just the importance of, of what was happening. And um, I was very naive about that, but um, it's been, it's been very special thinking back about it um, and, and being such, such a, not integral, uh, it's, it's been a big part of the history and um, I really, really love it and appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, obviously getting to work with some of the icons of the show and, you know, the, the likes of, of Ryan, Alan, Jackie, Susan. I mean, do you, do you get to, have you had much sort of chance to, to work with them? Because I know that, you know, we see you a lot with, you know, the Rodwells and, and people like that. But, but do you get much chance to kind of interact with, with the kind of the legends of the show, we should say? I've had a few scenes with, um, with uh, the OGs, like um, Carl and Jane and... Susan I haven't had a full-on storyline with any of them yet um that'll be cool if or when that does happen but um I get like I've had scenes with them before nothing nothing um storyline wise though but also outside of scenes we, we all talk to each other we're a big community and um we we get a lot we all get along really well yeah they're all very kind I mean that's a great thing because Neighbours, I've always had the impression that it's such a family unit and that, that the cast get on so well. So when you when you first kind of became involved in Neighbours, I mean, what were you nervous about going into this this show that 
that you know has such a big following did you know how big the following was for the show going into it well i did some research before beforehand and it was like i knew i knew that it had uh, had somewhat of a fan base and uh, because it's not it's not as big in australia as it in as it is in the uk so I, i truly had no idea until um it was released that the Varga Murphys were going to be in Neighbours. And then I got all these like like messages and stuff from people who had no idea. It was crazy. But um, <clears throat> I was very nervous going in regardless because that, so I'm a pretty new actor, pretty, yeah, decently new actor. I've only been in two other things before and Neighbours was my very first actual speaking role. And being a regular on Neighbours, <laughs> being my very first speaking role was um, was very exciting um but again very nerve-wracking i had no idea what to do for that first day um but i quickly caught on and everyone else yeah it just just really helped with it and you know what to do you know people who've been there on neighbors on a soap opera working like that working those hours uh yeah you, you catch on really quick now you've been given some quite big storylines uh to sort of kick off the year i mean one of the first storylines we you know kind of were hinted at at the beginning and the early days and it's it's come on since then is obviously the who's jj's father is now we finally know who his father is but for you what's it been like getting to work with the rodwells i mean candice um you know lloyd have both appeared on my show in the past they are fantastic as well as emerald so what's it been like getting to kind of become part of the rodwell family in a way amazing so again second family um in real life but um yeah so lloyd and candace and and emerald are all amazing actors and actresses i mean the the amount of conversations that i've had with them where i've taken so much away from them it's amazing it's like every day you learn something new when you meet up with them and um candace is one of the funniest and nicest people and lloyd is just one of the most like thoughtful and philosophical I he, he he thinks about things a lot and he's so interesting to talk to um but yeah it, it's it's amazing how how different everyone is but how amazing they all are respectively because of their differences it's amazing yeah and I mean obviously how, when you first joined how much were you told about the 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 DNA and the 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 storyline of JJ's father, did you know from the get-go that it was Felix or were you kind of in the dark with the rest of us? So from the get-go, um, I think the writers write about six months in advance and I didn't know that by the time I started. I didn't know who to go through, who to go to for like um, talking about future storylines. So I had no idea that Andrew was my dad for a long time until like a few weeks, uh, Andrew, sorry, wasn't my dad until um a few weeks before i even got the scripts for that when lloyd just casually mentioned it and uh, i was very shocked um and uh yeah i had no idea about who my real father was again until uh i saw the guy cast felix cast and <laughs> had one look at him and i was like okay yeah that's gonna be my dad um it was very correct because the casting for that was insane he, he looks so much like me it's scary <laughs> um but very nice guy again yeah and I mean, obviously, so yeah, the, didn't, didn't, oh, yeah, yeah I was going to yeah. say, the, the other thing as well that we've seen uh, in recent times is obviously it, JJ's not had a great deal of luck, let's say. I mean, he seems to get himself into trouble. And often it's, it's he, I don't think he means to, but he just has a habit of doing it. So what's your perspective on just his luck, really, I suppose? I think that everything JJ does is for a reason and the reason is the reason he does the things that he does is because he thinks that it's, it's the best thing to do. He thinks it's uh, the way to cause the best outcome. He really, he really does try to do the right thing, but I don't think he thinks about that enough. For example, like bringing a knife to school is absolutely stupid and ridiculous, but he was doing it to protect himself from a bully who is just about to beat him up or did beat him up. Yeah. Um, so I think, I think in a way that's justified, but again, he could have just gone to someone, talked about it, talked, gone to the police, but he didn't. Um, and for stuff like robbing the, uh, the Arena Rising building, he just wants to connect with this guy who, for some reason, he has a huge connection with that he doesn't understand why he finds out later it's his dad. But, um, he always, he always does something because he thinks it's the right thing to do, but he doesn't think about it enough or he doesn't talk 
about it enough with other people. Yeah. And I think that's how like the whole drama with um, the whole paternal story storyline even started, right? Because JJ wanted to keep all that a secret. Um, instead of just talking, it, it could have been solved with one simple conversation back in Werribee before JJ arrived on Ramsey Street. <laughs> um, but yeah, got to be grateful for that because that gives me the good storylines, I guess. Yeah. I mean, do you think in a way that maybe the reason that that um, that JJ did do the, the or got involved in the robbery is maybe he idolizes Felix a bit, or was it just that there was some, you know, like you say, there's some sort of connection there? No, oh, absolutely. Yeah, he wants to be sort of like this guy who's really cool. He just got out of prison. Um, he's teaching him all this cool, those cool boxing stuff. He taught him how to like psych out his own bully. Um, so he absolutely loves this stuff. He adores this guy, and um, he's very sad when he. Uh, when he, uh, I need to remember where we're up to in storylines right now. He's um, been caught now, yeah. He's yeah, so he's to... yeah, so he's been caught, and Felix has um, you know gone away. So yeah, so we're yeah. We're, we're kind of there at the moment. Yeah, so I'm I'm obviously very sad about that, um, and that's gonna that's gonna cause a few problems for JJ up in the future, actually, in the next few weeks. Yeah, I mean that must be something that. that is very exciting when I mean when you get new scripts all the time are you kind of like quick to want to see what happens next because I know there's quite a few casts that don't like spoilers don't want to know what's coming up long term for their characters obviously we can't talk too much about what's happening but do you like to know what's coming up for your character or do you prefer to kind of find out as and when you're filming it sort of thing that's a really good question um I don't mind being told about that sort of stuff but again, the Fridays when we get trips, so we always get our, our scripts for the next two weeks every Friday. And um, those are such special days. And I always look forward to getting the email or I get my scripts and, um, and or picking them up uh, at my green room. And um, it really makes it so special, so special just reading through the scripts in person instead of being told about what's going to happen. It's like it's like reading an amazing book where you, where you don't want to put it down. You want to keep reading it, and then um, you finish it, and then you want to go on to the next book as soon as that starts. But then that's going to be uh, uh, emailed in a week. That's a pretty weird analogy, but that's that's exactly how it feels. And also, we must talk about the fact that you know you get to do you you you've been quite lucky in that you've got to do obviously uh, you know driving on the show. You've got to do sort of various sort of sort of stunts as it were when you get to do those sort of things how much practice do you get or you know is it kind of you're sort of thrown in at the deep end of it so um for the driving i on the very first day um of driving i got one familiarization test with a car just like so that i could park and press the accelerator down etc um just very simple basic stuff with the car and um, I think I think the safety guy liked me um, because he on the actual day and uh, he let me do what the stunt driver was going to do. There was a stunt driver there for that scene for the very first episode, and um, I got to drive around the 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 court at like fifty kilometers an hour. It was it was insane. It was crazy. Um, <laughs> it was it was quite dangerous actually. I can't believe nothing bad happened. <laughs> Um, and you've also you've also got the most... responsibility of those three actors in the car as well, and the and the camera in the car, the really expensive camera, um, which was insane, and um, nothing happened, nobody got hurt, and I think they ended up using most of the my footage instead of the stunt driver's footage, which was yeah, uh, very <laughs> very lucky. Um, but then I think, especially for the stunts, though, um, to answer your other part of your question, for the stunts we get a heap of rehearsals, and um, we're very serious about our stunts just to make sure that nobody gets hurt because you know if you don't rehearse your stunts then somebody's going to get hurt but yeah we do it we do it weeks before and we get some like the best stunt people in the business as well it's 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 incredible um there's this guy who who's been teaching karate to some of the casts and he used to be like a bodyguard for the rolling stones or something like that it was it was amazing getting to meet the guy in real life um, in the flesh, and now he's just he's just teaching actors on Neighbours how to how to do basic karate. It was amazing, um, but yeah, we we take the stunts very seriously and um, make sure no one gets hurt. No one gets hurt. No one gets hurt. 
I mean, I imagine it must be a kind of like a choreographed dance move. You you have to kind of, you know, punch in the right direction, you know, any like backward steps. Is it is it very much choreographed, anything you, that you have to do? Oh, yes. Yeah, definitely. So take, for example, the um, uh, the kick that Charlie DiStefano, who plays Slade, and I uh, did. So um, we were alerted by, I think it was one of his lines, um, to start the scene and he came up to me, Dex ran away, put his hand on my shoulder. So we both, we both know what's about to happen. And he punches me or fake punches me right in the stomach. I go down. And as soon as I've hit the ground, I have to start scrambling. And as soon as I look him in the eyes, that's my sign for him to say, all right, you can go hit me now. I'm not going to like move or do anything unexpected. And then that, that lets him go for the kick a fake kick and uh then i roll over so yeah it's it's very very uh, straightforward heaps of steps and you rehearse it a heap um so that you're all confident while you're doing the stunts yeah now i wanted to briefly talk a bit about your um connection with obviously um uh the the i can't remember the guy's name the actor who plays your brother um dex on the show um his name's marley marley that's the one um because obviously you 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 know you 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 can clearly see on screen that you've got such a good bond. But obviously, I, I mean, I'm loving that sort of. You know, I've got a brother myself. I know that kind of bond where you you know you look out for each other. You definitely you know like to remind each other when you've done wrong. But you can tell that there is a strong bond there. So I mean, what's it been like getting to work with him? Um, you know, in real life, and and have you become sort of like brothers in real life? Absolutely, we have truly become like brothers in real life and uh, i get so excited whenever he's on set with me or just when we're hanging out the thing is though he lives so far away from me and i've never been able to um to catch up with him because it's it's really in, in real life apart from being at work which sucks but um even just last night we were we were calling we were watching uh like tv show we were watching some comedy stuff and um we were just all laughing and it was it was great like we we do that quite a bit where we just like debrief with each other about scenes about what's happening in real life with each other or just yeah making silly jokes it's it's yeah it truly a brother relationship and i'm very glad to have to have marley in my life he's such a great guy i mean for the characters do you do you quite like their sort of chemistry because there is a lot of a lot of brotherly interactions a lot of you know sort of one you know i think sometimes you get the impression that Dex does disapprove of what JJ does. So do you, do you enjoy those sorts of things? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, during those scenes where, um, I, again, I'm not even sure if this is Ed yet, but um, no, it, there was a fight scene briefly with JJ and Dex. And I like it where I, I liked that a lot because it shows that Dex is human too. He can't keep like, bottling up his emotions towards JJ doing the stupid stuff he does again. Um, and he finally just takes it out on JJ, yells at him, tries to punch him in the face, which is a little far, but yeah, it, it, JJ's doing stupid stuff. And um, yeah, it, I think it shows, yeah, the sort of, the sort of good with the bad of, of brother, brotherly relationships. I mean, if you're going to have a brother, you're going to have, a fight with the brother that's inevitable it's going to happen so I, I like how neighbors have done that now we must talk a bit about the opening titles because that's quite a big thing when you get introduced to the opening titles that the fans go you know crazy for it obviously in the uk and australia i believe there are different sh uh, shots so in in the uk we get to see the the family the varga murphys on a gondola so how was that filmed was that filmed actually on a river or is that a green screen how did that work so that was filmed in, um, I, I hope I'm correct, the Botanical Gardens in, in Melbourne. And um, it was, oh, this beautiful place. And I remember, I remember it like it was yesterday. We um, got driven down from the studios to that place. Um, I was with Marley and Sarah. I, I, I'll refer to the character names. Um, Dex, Cara, Remy, Andrew and Candice. Uh, we all got driven down there and we met this guy. His name was Wesley. He was the, um, the gondola. Is it called a gondola? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing he's, you'd call him like a, a gondola driver. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, he was the, the paddler and he was such a nice guy. I think there was a dog on board briefly. I'm not sure. Um, and, and it was just like half an hour of, of getting drone shots over the water 
and then it quickly turns away to Andrew and, and Wendy. And um, that was really fun, actually. It was pretty cold that day, though. Um, so I'm glad they added it to make it look nice and warm. Um, I think we were sitting on jumpers or something, or the jumpers were at our feet. So then when uh, the director called cut, we could just put it on, toast up nice and warm. Because then in, in Australia, I believe it's you guys are at the 80, outside the 82. Just so outside the 82. So do, do we know why? There are two different shots for the UK I and wish Australia. I, <laughs> I wish I knew. I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea. I, I do want to find out, though. Yeah, it's, it's strange. I was going to say because it seems like very odd, but I do feel like the UK have got the got the the, the better deal because that that gondola shot of the because it's obviously the first shot we see is you guys. So I mean, I say being out on the. I mean, I've been on a gondola before. I had the pleasure of doing one in. I think I was in in Venice, in Italy. Very very nice, but also very daunting because you think any minute now we could go into the water. It's gonna fall. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you find that that experience? Oh yeah, no, it was great. Um, the guy who gondola driver uh, Wesley, he he was a very funny guy, um, and he kept us entertained and. Uh, I remember seeing like some fish or something and Marley tried to point it out and the boat nearly rocked. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was a very fun experience and I, we probably won't get to do it again, unfortunately, but uh, maybe for a future opening titles. Um, but yeah, no, it was really, really fun. Really great that day. Now what advice, if you could give uh, JJ some advice, what, what advice would you give him? Because obviously we know that he's been through quite a bit already. So what, what would you say to him if you could say something? Talk to your parents more, right? Um, I reckon, yeah, your you, mum and your ma, they are always ready to listen to you. Um, even if you don't feel like it, even if you feel like they won't understand, you've got some of the best parents and Andrew as well. Um, you can always talk to them and you don't have to go up to this stranger who you barely know, uh, who was an ex-criminal, to, to confide your feelings in. Um, but yeah, if, if I think a lot of JJ's problems could be could have been resolved if he had talked to someone he trusts about it instead of just acting irrationally uh, and without thought. And do you think if you were in real life to meet JJ, so if you were to have like an interaction, do you think you'd get on with him? Do you think you would you would you know be friends, or is he very different to you? I think. I think JJ and I would get along. Um, we're both quite uh, introverted, not in, not like super introverted, but, but we're both quiet people and uh, we're both, what else? We both look alike. That would be a good conversation <laughs> starter. <laughs> um, JJ and I getting along. I th what other aspects of JJ's personality are there? He's a terrible liar. Uh, I'm a terrible liar too. <laughs> Um, I think, I think at the end of the day, we would get along, but JJ might like, you know, accidentally destroy his friendship because he didn't talk to mum and ma about his problems or something <laughs> like that. And I mean, you, we, we've seen a few interactions, but obviously, um, you know, uh, JJ's aunt is also on the show, Chelsea played by the fantastic Viva Bianca. So what's she been like to work with? Because... We've not seen a great deal of interaction between uh, you guys and and um, and Chelsea because she seems to be kind of a bit obsessed with Paul at the moment. Uh, correct. Yeah, I think I've only had, uh, as of airing dates, I've only had two scenes with her. Um, and the first one was her getting introduced into the street uh, just as, as Kara's sister. And um, we were talking about asking Sadia. That's what it was. Yeah, which was very strange because I think at that point, oh no, I, I used to, I used to think that she was my cousin or something like that. Which is very strange, but you know, neighbours. Um, and yeah, she was talking to me about that. And then the other scene we had at uh, Lassiter's where I actually did ask her out, and she encouraged me to do that, which uh, went went down horribly. Uh, which is lucky because. Sadie's JJ's actual cousin, even though JJ didn't realise that. Yeah, um, yeah, but Viva is a very, very not professional. Yes, she's professional, but she's um, not like uptight about it or anything. She's very kind. She's very helpful, and we've had some good conversations about like 
um, going into proper acting schools and stuff like that. And um, she obviously knows what she's doing um, as an actress. She's very smart. Yeah. Would you like to do more scenes with her going forward? Yeah, absolutely. She's, yeah, she's very, yeah, I learn a lot from her. Yeah, she's very insightful having conversations with her. Now, if if you were to be given the sort of the reins of the show for a day and you could decide what happened next for JJ, what would you love to see JJ get up to? What what drama, what what would you like him to overcome in an episode? What would I like him to overcome? Yeah, what what what, what would you like him to do? If you could write an episode or, or a storyline for him, what would you like to see him do? I want him to take a gigantic like legal risk and not get caught for a while, sort of like what aired, but he actually got caught that time. Um, and I want him to struggle keeping it a secret and struggle not being able to, to say anything about anyone and struggle to come up with excuses as to why this happened. Um, I think something like something huge because it'll really play with how you can justify, like, for example, setting fire to some place or I don't know what else you could do. Um, but yeah, something along those lines where, um, where there's, there's a big, like, um, what do you call it? A dilemma where it's like, is he doing the right thing? Like, well, where arguments could be made either way where JJ is a terrible person or JJ is doing the right thing. I, I really like that sort of stuff. Do you think going forward, um, as JJ gets older, do you see him becoming a bit of a, a bad boy or do you think at heart he will always be a good soul? Where, what do you think for the future? As the person who plays JJ, I'm always looking for ways to, to justify why, why he does what he does. And um, I think that way I always take his side and I don't exactly... When I got my very first character description for JJ, um, it was said that he becomes more and more of a bad boy. But I don't see that. I think that he's not trying to be a bad boy. He's not trying to do this for anyone. He just does it because he thinks he, it's, it's, again, yeah, the correct thing to do. Or not the correct thing, the right thing to do. Um, because I think JJ knows that there's... there's uh, difference between doing the right thing and doing the thing that will make the most people happy but he gets that wrong a lot i mean the, the, the great thing with i mean uh, say i've when i announced i was doing this interview i had so many comments uh about what an amazing actor that you are going to be and that you are um i think for, you know a lot of people find that neighbors is such a great training ground so for you going forward what would you love to do what would be the dream job you know if, if, if and when, obviously, you, you decide to move on from Neighbours, what would you love to do going forward? No idea. I think I'd like to stay on Neighbours for another couple of years at least, um, but I don't want to be typecast. I don't want to be, like, on there for, for way too long. Um, I would like to... I would like to do something in comedy because I absolutely love comedy and um, I love making people laugh. And um, I'd like to take a break from big dramatic stuff for a moment. But that being said, doing big dramatic stuff could challenge me as an actor because I know that that's not my huge, strong, uh, strong place, strong type of acting at the moment. And I would love to build on that and become better at that. Again, though, I love comedy so much <laughs> and I don't think I'd ever get that up. Now, I just want to say it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Of course, people need to keep watching Neighbours because it's only going to get better. It's literally, it is fantastic. So here in the UK, you can catch it on Amazon Freebie. Monday to Thursday, uh, episodes drop from 7am. Riley, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for giving up your time. Um, before we go, though, quickly, any messages you'd like to give to um, people that are currently stuck in hospital at the moment? Anything you'd like to say? Spend heaps of time with your family. Uh, I hope you all get well soon and I uh, wish you all a speedy recovery. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. You're welcome back anytime. Thank you. Appreciate it. Perfect. I'll stop there.